Tim Naylor with RefTech International Systems. I'm here to talk to you today about our light evac refrigerant recovery unit. This is a high pressure recovery unit. It weighs in at 161 pounds and it has a push pull rate of 81 pounds a minute, a vapor rate of 2.14 pounds a minute. At those rates, you're looking at an average from start to finish. You're going to go faster at the beginning, slower at the end. But your average rate of 2.14 pounds a minute on the vapor is going to get you all the way down to a 15 inch vacuum. Uh, this unit is built onto an upright cart. It's got hard rubber tires as opposed to pneumatic. At 161 pounds and those recovery rates, it is definitely the fastest 110 volt unit available on the market. The unit has half inch connections with half inch throughput internally, which gives us no restrictions. We have a half inch hose kit offered with two 10 foots and one 20 foot hose. The onboard subcooler, air cooled, is plenty sufficient in most situations. Although we do offer a water cooled option, it's an external kit coming off the discharge, which includes two small hoses, one to get to it, and then one to get out of the unit to the cylinder. Today I'm gonna to show you how to operate the unit and service it. We'll start by doing the oil change. We'll follow up with an ev evacuation of all the hoses and the unit. Then we're going to do a liquid push-pull recovery, a vapor recovery, and then a final evac to make sure the unit has no refrigerant in it when you're complete with the job. We're going to start by teaching you how to drain the oil out of the recovery unit. We ship the unit with mineral oil, but you're going to want to match the oil in the unit to the oil that's in the, recover in, in the refrigerant you're recovering. We're gonna start with a drain hose, a waste oil bucket, a gauge set, dry nitrogen or compressed air. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by draining the oil separator. We're gonna have our nitrogen hooked up to the center connection on our gauge set. We will have the low side hooked up to the suction of our compressor and the high side hooked up to the discharge. We'll put a drain hose on the oil separator into the waste oil bucket. We're going to, on the back side of the discharge, we do have a cap and it does have a king valve in there. We're going to want to loosen that or open the king valve just a couple turns. Once that's done, we're going to add 10 to 15 PSI of dry nitrogen or compressed air to the system, which will force the oil out of the oil separator and into the, into the bucket. Once that's gone, we're going to cut off our dry nitrogen or compressed air. We're going to then hook up this same drain hose to the compressor oil drain. We've located them right here on the front of the unit down the bottom, make it nice and easy to access. This whole process takes less than 15 minutes. We're then going to open up the suction side of our gauge set and add 10 to 15 PSI, which forces the oil out of the compressor and into the oil drain bucket. Once it's gone, we turn off our compressed air and nitrogen. To add the oil to the recovery unit, We'll start by adding it to the oil separator. What we've done is on our center hose, we disconnected the nitrogen or the compressed air, and we've hooked it up to our vacuum pump. We've got our drain hose back onto our oil separator. We've got it into a graduated cylinder holding 16 ounces of new oil. Again, POE or mineral oil, depending on what type of oil is in the refrigerant that we're going to be using for the next recovery. With our 16 ounces, of oil going into the oil separator, we will turn on our vacuum pump and open up the discharge side. We again, we will have our discharge valve open on the back of the compressor, the kink valve, just a couple turns. Once the oil is into the system, all 16 ounces, we will turn our vacuum pump off. Simple switch of the drain hose from the oil separator oil drain back to the compressor oil drain and 
our drain hose from a 16 ounce filled graduated cylinder to a 17 ounce filled graduated cylinder. And we will repeat the process by turning on the vacuum pump and opening up our suction side of the gauges. This will fill the compressor with the 17 ounces of oil. Again, this takes about 15 minutes. Very, very easy. Next, we're gonna talk about how to evacuate the system to remove the non-condensables and air from the lines and the system prior to a recovery. We're gonna simulate a real life recovery. We've got our chiller with our high side, our low side, our recovery cylinder, the vapor port, and a liquid port. We've got our recovery unit. As you see the setup, we have a liquid line going directly from the low side of the chiller to the liquid port of the recovery cylinder. We're gonna have the vapor port of a recovery cylinder to the inlet, vapor only inlet, of our recovery unit. From the outlet of our recovery unit, we're going to the high side of the chiller. We're going to set up the unit by plugging it in to a 110 volt power source. We are going to do our tank float bypass to the on position. We are going to have our fan switch off. What we're gonna do is our two-way valve located on the header is gonna be open, which is opening it to the atmosphere. We are going to have our three-way valve down on the front of the unit set to evac, self-evac. Once this is set up, we're gonna evacuate our hoses by opening up all of our lines. We're gonna keep our tank closed, the liquid port on our tank closed, the vapor port on the tank closed. We're going to keep the, the hose ball valve going from the liquid port to the low side of the chiller closed. We will keep the low side of the chiller hose closed. We're gonna open up our vapor port on the chiller but keep, or on the hose, but keep the vapor port on the chiller closed. We will then open up the hoses going into the recovery unit, both the inlet and the outlet. And we will open up both the inlet and outlet valves on the recovery unit itself. We're gonna turn the power switch on. This will bring everything into a 15 inch vacuum, except for the recovery cylinder and the chiller, but it'll only take about 10 seconds. To remove the liquid from the chiller, we're gonna utilize a push-pull process. With the hose configuration we had set up during the evacuation, we're only going to open up our valves on the hoses going into the unit. The hoses coming from the chiller low side going into our destination cylinder. You'll want to open up the king valves as well. With everything open, we power the unit, we start the recovery. What we're doing is pulling the vapor off the top of our recovery cylinder through our unit with the fan, bypass, or the fan switch off, because we don't want to condense this vapor, we're going to force the vapor into the chiller, which then pushes the liquid to the destination cylinder. Once all the liquid is through this system and into our destination cylinder, we can then turn our unit off and we'll be ready to start the vapor recovery process. For the vapor recovery, we've changed the hoses around a little bit. We're still going to be coming off of the high side of the recovery of the chiller, but we're now going to be going into the inlet of our recovery unit. From the outlet of the recovery unit, we're going into the liquid port of the destination cylinder. What I've done is I've disconnected and closed off the hose that was connected to the liquid port of our recovery cylinder. 
that now has vapor in it. I'm going to pull the vapor all the way from the end of that hose through the chiller, through my recovery unit. We are going to condense it, so I want to put the fan switch to back to on. Once it condenses in our subcooler, we will then take it and put out a cold liquid into our liquid port of the recovery cylinder. This does processes about 2.14 pounds a minute from start to finish. So you'll see it a lot faster at the beginning, slower at the end, but the average rate down to a 15 inch vacuum is 2.14 minutes. And this unit will shut off at 15 inches of vacuum. The little light will come on that says vapor recovery complete. Well, I want to thank you for watching the video we got here on the light evac refrigerant recovery unit for high pressure gas. Um, it is very easy to use. That's really what we were trying to convey to you. Um, you can buy these units through any wholesaler or distributor, nationwide, worldwide. Like I said, we do offer them in different voltages and phases, so we can definitely build one that fits your needs. The parts on this unit are readily available through RefTech.com. Um, any other questions you may have, please hit the Contact Us page. Appreciate your time. Have a wonderful day.